Hey, everyone, and thanks for joining us for our final semifinals prediction show. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. If you like listening to us chat about CrossFit news and everything that's going on in the sport, make sure to subscribe and like our channel. It is the final week and our final prediction show talking about who potentially is going to punch their ticket to the CrossFit Games. Here to show their predictions is Brian Friend, Patrick Clark, and Tommy Marquez, we are looking at Copa Sur. PC, we're going to start with you. Tell us about the top two men that everybody is looking to pick. Well, I guess all three of us uh, <laughs> caught my home game. So we got Guillermo yeah, <laughs> Mallers and Joaquin uh, Shelley at the one and two. And so, uh, I mean, that that's a no. I'll give those guys credit for those selections. But, uh, I actually think this is going to be a pretty close race. Uh, a lot of people are probably picking Guy to kind of run away with this based on, you know, how he did at the games last year. A lot of people who remember is Augustine did really well. And I think, actually, I wouldn't be surprised if Shelmay was actually leading after day one because that, that first day, uh, there's a long chipper, which he's pretty good at. Uh, Guy has yet to show. We haven't really seen much of Guy in terms of how he is in chippers. He typically, in the past, has been really good at long and then the other event is uh, a wrestling and run and Rochelle May is uh, obviously a lot better swimmer than uh, he is and so I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Rochelle May was leading after day one I think at the end of the day especially I think what we're all waiting to see is that barbell complex and see what he actually put the numbers to does he follow the guy probably warms up at 350 so that's going to be <laughs> fun to watch I think the other adults throughout the week uh, going to play in his favor, but I think it's going to be a close race between those two. Brian, what about your wild card pick? You and PC picked the same uh, wild card. Yeah, K- K- Sereni, I, I, uh, I just kind of, you know, I was looking, there's about five men that I consider for this pick, and uh, I think that there hasn't, you know, last year we didn't get to see these guys compete live. It was an online uh, event, and so there's some guys that it's not so much known about him. He's a little bit of a younger athlete at 23, but two years ago or three years before that, maybe, uh, depending on when it was in that competition season, he competed at the Brazil CrossFit Championships. He ended up finishing in the top 10 there as like a 20 or 21 year old. Um, I'm sure he's improved since then. And I think this is just an up and coming guy down there in Brazil. Um, by no means do I think he's a lock for a top three spot there. I think it's actually going to be pretty competitive amongst maybe like eight guys, but He's, he's a guy that I have my eye on to see if he can potentially be a guy who can uh, threaten Augustine and, and Guy, who are the clear favorites here. Um, and I'm excited to see him uh, and, and what he can do. Tommy, you have a different athlete in your wild card position. Who is it and why? Yeah, so um, I have Nico Bedarte, who looked like he was going to be one of the favorites to qualify last year. He, at the time, he was training with some of the underdogs crew, but he's since gone back home. I believe he's with the Mayhem Latam. Uh, crew as well and I think he just has a little bit to prove a a little bit left to prove after having a less than stellar uh, weekend last year but if you go back to um, some of the virtual competitions it was you know he and Augustine he was close behind and then there was a huge gap between Kaike and uh, Andrew Primo and some of these other athletes so I think skill wise he's up there with Augustine he's a little bit stronger but not quite uh, as strong as Guy, so he kind of slots in between those two athletes, and he's one of the few people that I think is well-rounded enough to consistently compete with them on a regular basis. And uh, I, I, I think that he's going to have a little bit of a redemption year after looking like he got to be um, and getting the last year. As for the women, this is where we really see diversity in each one of your picks. So let's just kind of go around and explain your picks because everybody has a different roster. PC, let's start with you. Well, by the way, diversity is an old wooden ship. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> but you didn't get that. I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> Here are your picks. <laughs> Yeah, let's see those things. That, that bomb, that bomb. All right. So, um, I think my first pick was actually um, Luisa Marquez, um, twenty-year-old. Uh, uh, he was out in Allen uh, in as a team. Oh no, it's Julia Pata. Sorry, my bad on that. So Julia, actually, both these women are training partners, and they're both a uh, part of CrossFit Allen. Uh, what? Um, Otto is 22 years old, uh, and Marquez is uh, 20. 
and um, they're just young up and coming. The, the, the two two women that came out of uh, Brazil last year are not competing as individuals. One due to a, a suspension, the other one, uh, Sasha Nuevas, is is competing with Mayhem. But uh, I really like Marquez and Cado in this, just based off of their body of work. Um, Cado in the and the this quarterfinals. And she's just a very – she finished fourth last year in the Brazilian CrossFit Championship, went on to the last chance qualifier. And, you know, she's just someone that I think is ready to kind of break through. She's kind of – she's a young athlete, as, as, as is Luis Marquez as well. And then Melina Rodriguez, she's someone who's been around. Uh, and uh, she's from Argentina. She's kind of a veteran. Kind of, she's been at the games. She, I think she really should, really should be the international champion. And she's part of her get down in uh, South America where – you know, she's constantly competing, and, you know, she's just a veteran presence. I wouldn't be surprised if she moved in there in, in one of those top spots as well. Brian, let's move on to your top three picks. Yeah, this is great. I'm so happy that PC didn't pick Molina to make the games because I think she's the runaway favorite in this region. She probably would have qualified last year if not for competing with COVID during the, uh, the online version of the semifinals that they had. She thinks she finished 14th and just became completely irrelevant. But before that, before that competition, she was one of three women, along with the other two who PT mentioned did make the games that people thought had a chance to. I like the Julia Cato pick. She's a little bit younger, and she's kind of in this trend of athletes that we've seen throughout semifinal season who competed at Wadapalooza this year and didn't do that well that have then turned around and had pretty good semifinal performances. We saw that from both Griffin Rowley and Kristen Best at the Syndicate. And I think that she might be another athlete in that mix. She was in the mid twenties at the Wadapalooza. I think she'll be up towards, the, you know, at the very worst in the top five down in Brazil. Story Campus is a little bit more ex experienced athlete, also from Brazil. Uh, she, I think she's 29 now. Um, she doesn't have a ton of competition history in the last couple of years, but I think that I, I kind of just went here with one one young athlete. I was looking at Louise all, so I decided to favor Julia, and uh, and one older athlete to kind of balance out my my uh, picks there because I've seen a lot of. This whole semifinals has been a balance between the old guard and the new guard. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had you my bets with one young and old, one older Brazilian athlete in the field. And well, Tommy, well <laughs> finally, let's take a look at your women's picks. So I, I, I think Melina is going to make it. Um, let me just double check because, okay, yeah. So the reason I put Victoria Campos up, and I think Melina could potentially win as well, one, I kind of guessed that Brian was going to pick Melina as well. I think, I think she really is the kind of class of that that area. She's you know had individual games experience. She's been on the team. She was part of that uh, Big Friends Recoleta a team that broke through from uh, through the South Region back in 2018. It was a big deal. Uh, I think that Victoria Campos might win at least one event each day. Um, you go back and you look at what, what some of the things she excels at, and particularly you know at the semifinal. Uh, level last year, you know, first day she wins that that chipper that was on event two. That's what we're, we're leading with a similar style event in Copa Sur on day one. Uh, she was tremendous for the legless rope times in the ring muscle ups, and well, you know, we get a ton of legless rope times. I think she could win that event, particularly that's an area that Melina might struggle. And same with Eliza. And then on the final day, there's a workout that basically feels like Kalzu, except for. Instead of doing burpees, you have to do ring muscle-ups. And I think that's where she's really going to be able to shine in those two minutes when a lot of these women under fatigue might start to get beat up a little bit on the rings. She can absolutely fly on them. And then you have another kind of relay-style event to close. If she wins three events across the weekend and she has the benefit of looking left and right and seeing where her competition is, something she didn't get in the virtual semifinals last year, I think this could be something that puts her over the top. It's the final Tommy weekend up, for all the marbles. Tommy brings up an excellent case. It's a big program, you know, obviously. It's, really um, it's the only semifinals that's actually programmed the CrossFit uh, program events on the same. So that's a pretty interesting. I know also they're only the second step of final to have a swimming event. So it's a, it's a, the programming is going to play a lot into this favor, and I, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. It's unlike anything we've seen in the summer finals, and it's something I think that will probably be the deciding factor on the event. Wow, well, you're not even factoring Tommy into it. <laughs> he totally <laughs> discarded Tommy. Oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Your I'm women's picks in, in South, South America are going to plummet you out of the top two. Hey, I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call up the Granite Games and be like, find me some points. Find me some points. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you, if, we're, we're, we're Minnesota, not Georgia. Probably. We'll find out who has the real connection, Tommy or Patrick. <laughs> uh, okay. It, <laughs> he wins. It's going to be exciting. There's a lot on the line, some discs and a surprise gift from yours truly. Oh, geez. And pride. Most important. And pride. And pride. And pride. And pride. <laughs> That's the most important part. Show our faith. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This was so much fun. I hope everybody enjoyed watching us over the course of the last month with these uh, predictions. It's been a good time. Um, I've really enjoyed listening to each of you kind of talk about your different picks and why you pick certain uh, athletes. So, builds a lot of momentum heading into the game season.